Everyone's heard of the Shroud of Turin. That's the cloth that some say Jesus was buried in. How authentic is it, and can it be proven that it is the cloth that Jesus was buried in? To talk about it is Mark Antonacci. Mark, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Thanks for having me. You are from St. Louis? You're a St. Louisan? Yes. And you're considered one of the experts of the Shroud of Turin? Yes, I am. All right. Uh, and you're writing a book about all of this stuff? Yes. You claim you have new evidence or new tests, or what's what's going on here? Well, first of all, back up a second. The Shroud of Turin uh, is hotly debated, correct, whether or not this is the actual cloth in which Jesus was buried. Well, thousands of tests have been done on the Shroud of Turin since 1978. Okay. Um, only one result is is inconsistent with its authenticity as the burial garment of Jesus. That result from the one test is what's controversial. The other evidence has been out there for 30 years, and um, uh, no one's really refuted that. It's the radiocarbon dating that's the controversial. Well, the radiocarbon dating is probably the most scientifically accepted form of testing, correct? Oh, no. No? No. Uh, There's a lot more definitive tests than radiocarbon dating. It's just one of the few scientific tests that can that from which you can attribute age to but it's quite fallible it's it's made a lot of mistakes in the past but it is a good indicator of its age but no it's not definitive what are some of the other tests that have uh, sort of proven that this is the uh, or lend people to believe that it could be well you've got an image uh, of a man that's about five foot nine and a, a quarter. You've got the frontal and dorsal images. You have thousands of threads and fibers that have about 30 unique features. Um, all of them are encoded in, in ways that are unfakeable. Uh, that's never been duplicated naturally or artistically. Scientists in the 21st century can't duplicate many features about those images or those blood marks, and you find those blood marks literally from head to foot on the front images and the back images. You've really got conservatively hundreds to thousands of of unfakeable items of evidence that science has has revealed from microscopic, uh, computer-generated, photographic, uh, examining the shroud in every wavelength possible, there's literally been thousands of tests done on that cloth. What does the Catholic Church say about the Shroud of Turin? Uh, they they pretty much keep a neutral position on that. So they haven't they haven't endorsed that this is the the cloth, then, but they haven't said this isn't. Um, they make very favorable statements about the Shroud uh, that it you know it indicates the passion that Christ went through and that sort of thing. But they've never definitively said one way or the other. Yeah. No. The Shroud is called the Shroud of Turin because it was found in Turin, is that correct? Uh, no, it's been in Turin since 1578. Okay. And so it just uh, acquired that almost informal name. How did it get there? I mean, it obviously came from Jerusalem to Turin. How did it get there? Do we know? Uh, in France, it, it was in France, what is now the border of France. Um, it went to Turin in 1578. You can trace it back to um, Edessa, Turkey, which is where they believe it went from Jerusalem. Gotcha. Okay. Now, you claim that you've come up with a series of tests or, or new, uh, new, new guideline, new something that can help determine whether or not this is the true cloth. I presented these uh, series of tests as a keynote address at the last international conference uh, held on the Shroud in 2010, outside of Rome, and this was in conjunction with the Shroud's last public exhibition. Okay. And what did you, what, what did you say? Well, these tests um, call for, the Shroud has never been examined um, molecularly and at the atomic level. And these tests could examine the Shroud at those levels and could reveal some startling information. All of the analysis of the shroud indicates that these images, that the source of encoding is the body that's a real human body that was wrapped in that cloth. Not only is the source of the imaging the body, 
but it appears that radiation can cause all of these unique features on the images, and only radiation can cause that. One particular form of radiation would cause more carbon-14 atoms to be created in the linen, and that would make your radiocarbon date incorrect. It would add carbon-14 atoms to the ratio, mm -hmm. and that would cause the ratio to, to appear to give a wrong date. The radiocarbon labs are counting the number of carbon-14 atoms correctly. They're just misinterpreting it because many of the atoms could be there as a result of this phenomenal radiating event that occurred from the body. Where did the, uh, where did the, so you're saying the, you're not saying radiation like we think of radiation with like a nuclear fallout radiation. I'm talking about particle radiation or neutron radiation that, yes, could only be created in the 20th century. Where did the Shroud of Turin pick up this radiation from? It appears that if it was irradiated, the source of this radiation could only have been the body inside the cloth. And yes, that would be a miracle. That's impossible to duplicate. In fact, it appears to be coming from the length and the width and even the depth of that dead body in the cloth. So you're saying that the body of Jesus Christ was full of radiation? The image could very well have resulted from a burst of radiation from that body as it disappeared in a fraction of a second. And you could, the test that I call for among these tests, it could test whether the cloth had been irradiated with particle radiation. Okay, so you're going to, you want to test the Shroud of Turin yes. to find out if it has been exposed to radiation. Yes, and that can be done. A radiation, neutron radiation, will create two isotopes that virtually do not exist in nature. And you would find uh, uh, an abundant amount of these isotopes or atoms right. on the cloth. And they could only have been there as a result of radiation. Okay. Uh, now, uh, from what I understand, the carbon dating they have to destroy at least a part of the the term the the shroud to determine yes okay would they have to dis destroy any or all part of the shroud for this test for this particular test you would have to destroy some tiny samples but keep in mind the cloth is over 14 feet long and three and a half feet wide you could take samples from strategic locations. Would you have to take a hole, or is it a fiber? Is it a is it a piece of lint, or what? What, what are we talking it about? It would here? be smaller, much smaller than your little fingernail. So you it, you wouldn't destroy it. You would just take this uh, just a, the tiniest of 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 molecules or of lint or of. You, you would take a very tiny sample and destroy that. Mm -hmm. But that would, that would tell you whether these atoms were in the cloth and whether the cloth had been radiated. You could, these, this, these atoms and the carbon-14 atoms will, will also tell you when this spectacular radiating event occurred. Because if it occurs before the 20th century, it couldn't possibly have been done artistically or by any other method. So you're saying that once the tests will determine if if the if it was exposed to radiation in say in in 1945, this this test will show it. Yes. And if it if it will show that it was in 1845, the only radiation out there would have been either this remarkable story of this burst of radiation when Jesus disappeared. Oh, but there's there's no other way for this radiation to exist. There's no other historical event you could attribute right. it to. Uh, Mark Antonacci is our guest. He's a Shroud of Turn expert. You're here in St. Louis. What, what's your day job? I'm an attorney. You're an attorney. Yeah. How how do you know so much about all this science stuff? Uh, I've 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 just been fascinated by the evidence and where it led to, and uh, the more it led to that type of a conclusion the more sobering it was. All right, hold that thought. Mark Antonacci, I want to come back, talk more with you. I have more questions. Uh, the Shroud of Turin...
Uh, St. Louis says he has a test to prove or disprove whether or not it is the true shroud of Jesus Christ. Back in a moment on KTRS. Three.